Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programas ofrecen muchas lenguas. Veuillez visitar suprememastertv.com barra oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Ah, cada que hablo andar y esto no hay, a nadie que va a chalarlo. Ahí ya es chulo andi, suprememastertv chuka kam edu slash schedule. He believed that animal people are intelligent, morally upright beings and spoke out against the use of people from the animal kingdom in sports, entertainment, and research. Mark Twain, Great American Literature. Continue watching to find out more. As humans, we see us as people, and then there's all the rest. But we're all animals, and we're all sentient and deserving of autonomy and respect and care. Joanne MacArthur, Vegan Interested in learning Genesie? Here's a greeting to get you started. Bonjour, comme tu clafais va? That means hello, how are you? Delightful viewers, I am Julie. The hospitable people of Guernsey cherish your gracious company and wish you an abundance of bliss. It's a joy to have you here for Mark Twain, Great American Literature. Samuel Langhorne Clemens, better known by his pen name Mark Twain, was considered one of the greatest American authors and humorists. Among his many works, his novels, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and its sequel, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, have become classics in American literature. A man of many talents, Mark Twain was also a riverboat pilot, journalist, lecturer, inventor, and entrepreneur. His writing style was usually informal and amusing, differentiating him from other important 19th century writers. He once wrote, Humor is mankind's greatest blessing. Born in 1835 in Florida, Mark Twain was the sixth of seven children. John Marshall Clemens, his father, was an attorney and justice of the peace. Shortly after his father passed away, Mark Twain left school to work for a local newspaper as a printer's apprentice to supplement the family's income. During the course of his work, he enjoyed reading the news of the world. In 1851, he began working as a typesetter, also writing articles and humorous sketches for his brother Orion's newspaper, Hannibal Journal. At the age of 18, Mark Twain spent time in New York City and Philadelphia working on different newspapers and finding some success with his articles. During a trip to New Orleans down the Mississippi River, Mark Twain was inspired to become a pilot. He studied hard for two years, obtaining his steamboat pilot license in 1859. He worked on the river for five years, and it was a financially rewarding job. In 1861, Mark Twain accepted his brother Orion's invitation 
to go to Nevada in search of a new career. For more than two weeks, they journeyed across the Great Plains and the Rocky Mountains. His experiences in the West would later provide inspiration for his book Roughing It. He then began writing for a Nevada newspaper called The Territorial Enterprise, using his pen name Mark Twain for the first time. The pseudonym means Mark No. 2, a term used on steamboats to signal when the water reached the safe depth of 12 feet or 3.65 meters. In 1865, his short story, The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County, was published. The entertaining tale was printed in newspapers across the country and brought him national attention. The following year, he was hired by the Sacramento Union to visit and write about the Sandwich Islands, now called Hawaii. Mark Twain's writing soon became popular, prompting him to embark upon lecture tours and establish himself as a successful stage performer. His next step to success came in 1869 with the publication of his first book, The Innocence Abroad. It became a nationwide bestseller. The book contains vivid descriptions and observations that he made during his adventures through Europe and the Middle East on the steamship Quaker City. Mr. Twain made stops in Europe, including Paris, Venice, Milan, Florence, Rome, and Athens. His travels culminated in an extended trip through the Holy Land and Egypt. On the journey, he also met his future brother-in-law, Charles Langdon. Mark Twain married Olivia Langdon in 1870. They lived in Buffalo, New York, where Mr. Twain worked as editor and writer for the local daily newspaper, Buffalo Express. Olivia assisted him, reading his manuscripts and offering her feedback. In 1871, they moved to Hartford, Connecticut to be nearer to family and friends. Then, in the following year, Mr. Twain's semi-autobiographical book, Roughing It, was published, featuring colorful recollections and stories from his frontier adventures in Nevada. Mark Twain lived in Hartford with his wife and three daughters for the next 17 years. During those years, some of his most famous works, such as The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and its sequel, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, were completed. In the preface of the book on Tom Sawyer, he stated that most of the escapades were drawn from his personal experiences and those of his schoolmates, with hopes to remind adults of their own adventurous young selves. Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is now referred to as one of the great American novels and follows a teenager as he floats down the Mississippi River on a raft with a companion called Jim. Huckleberry and Jim meet with danger on their perilous but hilarious journey. Vegan, what else to show God's love within us? Let's take a moment to enjoy the sweet sounds of bird people chirping in the garden. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Mark Twain, Great American Literature. In 1883, Mark Twain published one of his most important works, Life on the Mississippi. Both entertaining and informative, it is a textbook on the history, life, and lore of the Mississippi River during the 19th century.
Mark Twain created his own publishing company in 1884 called the Charles L. Webster Company and successfully published the memoirs of His Excellency Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th President of the U.S. When fortunes changed and the company became insolvent, Mr. Twain set out on a worldwide lecture tour. He wrote about the strengths and weaknesses of a rapidly changing world, recording observations and reporting on his surroundings and giving us insights on the people, events, and social behaviors of his time. A true journalist, Mark Twain once wrote, Supposing is good, but finding out is better. Widely acclaimed for his literary prowess, Mark Twain was given an Honorary Master of Arts degree by Yale University in 1888 and an Honorary Doctor of Letters degree by Oxford University in 1907. Mark Twain was also interested in science and technology. He patented three inventions, an elastic strap for pants, a self-pasting scrapbook, and a history trivia game. He also wrote a book called A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, which features a time traveler from contemporary America. In the text, he cleverly expounds his knowledge of modern technology through to Arthurian England, a subject nowadays known as alternate history. A popular speaker, Mark Twain was asked to appear at various well-known gentlemen's clubs. He was made honorary member of the Bohemian Club in San Francisco and the Savage Club in London, England. In addition, Mr. Twain was a humanitarian who cared for the rights of people from the human and animal kingdoms alike. In 1906, when he heard that his friend Ina Kohlberth had lost nearly everything she owned in an earthquake, he generously volunteered to sell autograph portrait photographs for her benefit. Mark Twain also played a vital role in raising public awareness about animal people cruelty and exploitation. He believed that animal people are intelligent, morally upright beings, and spoke out against the use of people from the animal kingdom in sports, entertainment, and research, including cock people fighting and bull people fighting. In a letter to the London Anti-Vivisection Society, he wrote, I am not interested to know whether vivisection produces results that are profitable to the human race or doesn't. To know that the results are profitable to the race would not remove my hostility to it. The pains which it inflicts upon unconsenting animals is the basis of my enmity towards it, and it is to me sufficient justification of the enmity without looking further. After the passing of his wife Olivia in 1903, he chose to live in New York, later moving to Stormfield in Reading, Connecticut. Here, Samuel Clemens, lauded as the great writer Mark Twain, passed away at the age of 74 on April 21, 1910. A tribute from President William Howard Taft read, Mark Twain gave pleasure, real intellectual enjoyment to millions, and his works will continue to give such pleasure to millions yet to come. His humor was American, but he was nearly as much appreciated by Englishmen and people of other countries as by his own countrymen. He has made an enduring part of American literature. The Mark Twain House and Museum in Hartford, Connecticut is designated a National Historic Landmark and is a popular attraction. We too remember Samuel Clemens, or Mark Twain, with fond gratitude for the many meaningful stories he penned for our enjoyment. We close our program with a token of wisdom from the beloved writer. 
Give every day the chance to become the most beautiful day of your life. Vegan, cause we choose to be kind. It's been a pleasure to have your company today, cherished viewers. Coming up next is vegan chef Eddie Garza's Latin American Foods, part one of two, Mexican vegan esquites, or corn salad, with almond cotija cheese, right after noteworthy news, here on Supreme Master Television. May the heavenly light be your guide towards a noble way of life. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash MOS.